So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekly business meeting. Uh, today is Tuesday, October 6, 2020. The time is 2.04 2 p.m. Officially calling this meeting to order, attending commissioners Duncan, Brooks, and Filios. And I'm gonna ask JP, our newly appointed director of solid waste, to lead us in the pledge. Okay then, so moving on to the consent calendar. I move that we approve the consent calendar as listed on our business meeting agenda for October 6, 2020. My mic, I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye and the motion is carried. Moving on to the payables list. Um, I would ask for reconsideration for a $200,000 um, charge um, for the funding of the state study for um, NAS. Okay, so there's a formal request for reconsideration of the $200,000 contribution by the county to the National Academy of Sciences proposed study for Coeur d'Alene Lake. That would be a motion. That would be a motion. I won't second that. Neither will I, so the motion dies for lack of a second. Okay, thank you anyway. Any changes to the agenda? Uh, well, the payables haven't been approved. Oh, I'm sorry. Which is, I suppose, fine with me. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> I move that we approve the payables. You second, in other words. Uh, uh, so wait a minute, so your motion is withdrawn. Is yeah, I'm, I'm not moving to approve the payables. Okay. okay, so then you are. Go right ahead. You're confusing me. It's easy. I, <laughs> I move that we approve the payables in the amount of $592,759.97, including a jury panel payments of $4,987.04. Second. Aye. Nay. Aye, and the motion is carried. Moving on to our action items. First amendment to the agreement for uh, the election systems and software LLC, also known as ESNS elections. Shelley, please. Good afternoon. Shelley Ames for the record for elections. This is our agreement through ESNS for a renewal of license, hardware, software, and firmware maintenance for the year for the fiscal year. Any increase? As of last night after seven o'clock, we hit over 100,000. Registered, registered, registered voters. voters, yeah. Right. Okay. Questions? Motion? I move that we approve the First Amendment to the agreement uh, with Election System and Software LLC and our Elections Department. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Item number two, First Amendment, <coughs> excuse me, to the Standard Agreement Professional Services, CH2M Hill for Solid Waste, JP. Good, after good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for having me. My name is John Phillips, or JP, your new Solid Waste Director, for the record. In summary, the Solid Waste Department is requesting this $30,000 amendment to close out the engineering and consulting services agreement between Kootenai County Solid Waste and Jacobs slash CH2M Hill Engineering for the landfill corridor project. This sum of money incorporates changes in road reconfiguration, power supply changes, construction contract rebid due to lack of interest at the time, services for unsuitable subgrade, and final closeout activities. This $30,000 amendment will finalize the project for a contract total of $354,610. This project did come in under budget. Okay, good job. Questions? Motion? I move that we approve the First Amendment to the Standard Agreement for, for Professional Services from CH2M Hill uh, and the Solid Waste Department. Second. Aye. Aye. 
I and the motion is carried. Okay, hey, item number three, cooperative agreement with the Office on Violence Against Women and the Department of Justice, and that would be Mr. Hyde for State District Court and our Resource Management Office. Come right up. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Mark Hyde, the Domestic Violence Court Coordinator for the record. Um, we have been selected uh, from one of four jurisdictions in the U.S. Um, for this grant to be a mentor court for the nation. And I basically ask and uh, move that we accept this grant and uh, become a national mentor court. And I would like to give the floor okay. to Judge Peterson. <coughs> Judge Peterson, you're on the line, sir? No, he's oh, you're here with us. I'm sorry. standing right, right here. <laughs> you got that mask on. May I? Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, my name is Clark Peterson. I'm one of our magistrate judges here in Kootenai County. And I wanted to address you briefly, I hope, about this issue of the grant funding for being designated as a mentor court and sort of explain a little what that means. Because I know as decision makers like I am, we're usually deciding about things that are difficult and hard. It's nice to have something that's easy and that's really good news. Um, this is phenomenal news for Kootenai County. I came before the commissioners about two years ago and we were talking about domestic violence court then. And I said, this is really something you guys can get behind because we're not talking about funding the JVT here. This is an all-star team. We're doing amazing things. And that has panned out to be true. About a year ago, I was selected to be a judicial uh, engagement network judge, which is, I was one of 12 judges from across our entire country by the Department of Justice, Office of Violence Against Women, and Center for Innovation in State Courts. Um, and then on top of that, we have now been designated as a mentor court. What that means is all the courts across the country that run domestic violence court, they get funding in some way from the Department of Justice and the Office of Violence Against Women. Well, when they get that money, they're not just allowed to take it and do whatever they want with it. They have to improve themselves. And the way they administer that is they designate a tiny handful of courts across our country as mentor courts. All those other courts have to come and observe how the mentor courts do it to learn from the best of the best. Our court has now been designated that way. And in fact, I don't have two mentor courts. Most states don't even have one. So this is quite an amazing thing for our community. Um, it's great for our victims and survivors of domestic violence. Uh, and it's, it's really something personally I am very proud of. It was a goal of mine when I took over from Judge Friedlander presiding over domestic violence court. And I think it says a lot about the little Kootenai County is truly leading the nation on this issue, and it's something I think to feel very good about. The second thought I had briefly for you is, I don't want to suggest it's all the courts um, doing it is not. We have had any number of contributions from our amazing county agencies. The Public Defender's Office has been phenomenal. Um, our county probation, adult misdemeanor probation, mm -hmm. has designated specified probation officers. They graded out very highly by the Department of Justice and the Office of Violence Against Women. Um, Mr. Hyde, our court's coordinator, um, the court's clerk's office, uh, county sheriff and prosecutor have all, all done a phenomenal job. So it's really a shared uh, thing here. And I just am happy to answer any questions if you have about it. How much does it cost the county to participate? That's an outstanding question that I don't know the answer to. Carlene would know that answer okay. and Mark may know that mm -hmm. answer. Um, I stay away from the money side of it. You got a ballpark? You're basically fully funded through the grant. That's a good, yep. yeah. that's a good price. Yes. I didn't no want to say that county, without being correct. Uh, no out-of-county costs. Okay, it's all right. Good. It fund. sounds like a real honor, a little backwards uh, Idaho having two of these now. Right. Yeah, Ada has one and we have yeah. one. Yeah, pretty incredible. So thank you. So that's the thank roughly you. almost $150,000. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much for doing it. Thank you for making Thank you me so me much, Judge Peterson. Thing. Appreciate it. Uh, Nancy, you might want to include this in a Facebook post or some sort of promotion. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item number four. Would you yeah. like a motion? Oh, yeah, we need a motion. Go ahead. I move, I move that we uh, accept the award and sign the cooperative agreement with the Office on Violence Against Women with the Department of Justice. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. 
I and the motion is carried. Moving on to item number four, 2020 Emergency Management Performance Grant Subrecipient Agreement with the Idaho Office of Emergency Management, also known as OEM, and our Resource Management Office. Uh, Rachel Irish, Office of Emergency Management. Um, this is the grant that funds the salary and operations expenses for the Office of Emergency Management. Okay. Questions? Motion? I move that we approve the 2020 Emergency Management Performance Grant slash subrecipient agreement with the Idaho Office of Emergency Management and Office of Emergency Management and our resource management office. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Item number five, 2019 State Homeland Security Grant, known as SHSP, subrecipient agreement, Operation Stone Garden Resource Management Office, and our Kootenai County Sheriff's Organization. Good morning, Commissioners. Mike McFarland for the record. Uh, this is, this would be the acceptance of the Operation Stone Garden from, their years are a little different, FY19 uh, that got put on hold because of COVID. This is a $75,000 grant, with part of it going for overtime and then part for equipment. Okay. Questions? Motion? I move that we approve the FY19 State Homeland Security Grant Program um, and the sub and sign the subcipient agreement for Operation Stone Garden. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Item number six, termination of lease, AAL-2020-400, Fighter Town LLC for the airport. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Stephen Kierar for the record. This is a agreement where the gentleman that is the Controller of the Fighter Town LLC has changed his mind in a location, and we're currently negotiating a different location. Uh, it is a we would this release is for twenty seven hundred ten dollars and ninety two cents per year. However, we are already have more people put in the shop. So. Okay. Questions? Motion. Motion. I move that we approve the termination of lease AAL dash twenty twenty dash four hundred with Fighter Town LLC. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye, motion carried. Stephen, I'm curious, what would be housed in this hangar? We are currently discussing what his new plan would be as we have not gotten a clear definition of what his concept would be. So it's one of the items we are negotiating. <laughs> okay. So it may be back before you as a decision. Okay, thank you. Item number seven, development and ground lease AAL 2020-601 CDA Jet Center for the airport, Stephen. Stephen Kerr, again for the record, this is what is called the uh, fuel farm area lease. It is in $24,746.46 per year. It's a little over 95,000 square feet. Okay, motion. I move that we approve the development and ground lease AAL 2020-601 Coeur d'Alene Jet Center. I Close. second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Item number eight, construction agreement, partial perimeter fence for, uh, excuse me, with Idaho fence for the airport. Stephen. I'm sure Stephen Kerrigan for record, this is what was brought last week that was improperly noticed. Uh, it is an agreement with Idaho Fence, part of our FAA grant, which is 100% match. We have no cost in it. It is $468,736. It is for the fencing on the west and north sides of the airport. Questions? Motion. I move that we approve the construction agreement for the partial perimeter fence with Idaho Fence Company in the airport. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Item number nine, fiscal year 20, building resilient infrastructure and communities, uh, brick and flood mitigation assistance, 
notices of funding opportunity, Kootenai Electric, and our Office of Emer Emergency Management. Rachel. Rachel Irish, Office of Emergency Management. Um, this is a new program with FEMA hazard mitigation grants um, about building resilient infrastructure. They put a lot of money into it this year. Kootenai Electric um, would like to apply for this. Kootenai County has to be the applicant, um, although it is a grant for them to use. There, there is no cost to the county other than us being the administrators of that. Um, and Doug Elliott from Kootenai Electric is here and would like to speak to the project. Doug, come right up, please. Commissioners, Doug Elliott for the record. Um, yeah, this is a grant, actually three, that's benefiting uh, Kootenai County. Um, the proposal is to convert about 60 miles of overhead line to underground and densely forested areas uh, to the tune of about $60 million, of which FEMA would fund about 75% through this. We appreciate your support. Wonderful. And this is the effort that um, actually you're, you're funding David Callahan's organization as yes. he provides the manpower to work this through the process for you. Is that correct? It, it is. And in fact, that process is not only necessary for this, but any other sub-applicant who is similarly pursuing a BRIC grant. Fair enough. Any other questions? Motion. I move that we approve the FY20 BRIC and flood mitigation assistance grant um, for Kootenai Electric um, and our Office of Emergency Management. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Aye, and the motion is carried. Item number 10, First Amendment Harrison Breakwater Installation Agreement, North Idaho Maritime LLC Parks and Waterways. Nick Snyder. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Nick Snyder for the record. Uh, essentially, Commissioners, this is just merely, merely a uh, clarification for a location for launching our breakwater into Lake Coeur d'Alene and establishes a chain of custody between our breakwater manufacturer, Bellingham Marine, and our local Marine Support Services contractor, North Idaho Maritime. There's no cost, again, essentially just a housekeeping item for our contract. Okay. Motion. I move that we approve the First Amendment with the Har for the Harrison Breakwater Installation Agreement and North Idaho Marine LLC. Second. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Item number 11. Software license and support agreement, North Point classification, Equivant uh, for our jail, KCSO. Is that Captain Deek? Yes. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Captain Andy Deek. Uh, this is the classification software upgrade that was discussed in our uh, budget uh, preparations in the spring and the amount uh, quoted there is 34,230 which falls just a couple hundred less than what we budgeted for and this will offer a complete software upgrade uh, the implementation package at a value of $30,030 along with five licensing and training that goes along with that for an additional 42 Hundred dollars totally in the 34,230 is what you should have in front of you. Uh, the company has sent forward the contract. It's been reviewed by legal and signed by their company administration, and it's just awaiting your final approval. Okay. Any questions? Motion. I move that we approve the software license and support agreement with North Point Classification and um, Equivant. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Item number 12, amendment to contract for architectural and engineering services with Longwell Trap for our detective <coughs> processing building remodel. Sean Riley for our sheriff's organization in the BLCC. Go right ahead, Sean. Good afternoon, Commissioner Sean Riley for the record. Back in March, of 2020, we asked Longwell Trap, we entered into a contract with Longwell Trap to give us uh, estimates for the budget process for the uh, detective processing building. This is an amendment to that contract to go ahead for a total of $10,000 to go ahead and um, include construction documents, bidding, and construction oversight. Okay. Any questions? Motion. I move that we approve the amendment to the amendment to the contract to 
with architectural and engineering services, Longwell Trap, the detective processing building remodel. Second. Aye. 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 <laughs> Motion carried. Item number 13, approve the fiscal year 21 salary increases. It's the updated employee list, uh, which contains some revisions. It's effective October 1st, 2020. And Sylvia Proud, our HR director. Take it, Sylvia. Sylvia Proud for the record. Um, the schedule that I submitted to the commissioners includes four employee pay salary levels need to be approved by the board for 10-1-2020. The employees either had some movement through their foreign office matrix, um, three of them did, so we needed to make that adjustment that they had their move, moves in September and then they would go on the new range scale of October 1st. We have one correction, originally an employee was approved to receive a 1.8% increase. We found that the employee fell under the general pay plan of the state of Nevada and so they're eligible for the 2%. Um, the other consideration I would ask of the board is if there are any other future updates of this nature, which we're hoping this was the last of it, that if there is the potential they could just be presented on the consent calendar for approval by the board. I'm fine with that. I'm good. Thank you, Sylvia. Motion. I move that we approve the FY21 salary increases on the updated employee list um, submitted by HR, effective October 1st, 2020. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, motion carried. Item number 14, approve the amended Kootenai County Taxing District levy rates uh, for fiscal year 2021 and then going back to 2020. Auditor, go right ahead. If you so ask. Joanne Connor for the record. Um, I'm asking you to approve an amended levy rate. Uh, uh, as you know, earlier, giving you levy rates that we were um, waiting on official documentation on. Um, so we just have one district um, that has an amended levy rate and it's due to them being um, non-compliant to the local governing entity central registry. Uh, I received notification that they had several audits and that they would remain non-compliant. Um, where at the time I submit it to you, I put them as compliant because normally they put, you know, their status as uh, compliant pending audit. I didn't realize they were that many years behind. Um, so the, just that one amended levy rate for Hayden Lake Sewer. Um, we do have other districts that are non-compliant, although it is not affecting levy rates at all. Um, the other one is city of state line. They don't uh, tax levy in Harrison URD. And then we'd have the Hayden Lake sewer. And I will be publishing those in the newspaper that they're non-compliant per statute. Okay. Um, 2020 has been an exceptional year for all of us, as we know. Um, and, and definitely in the tax world also. So I felt like um, showing you just the differences in levy rates weren't really enough to explain um, things this year. So I did an additional um, comparison. I've done one for the comparison of just the levy rates themselves, but then also looking at um, value percentages. And then also making some notes on the comparison um, because m many taxpayers are definitely interested in sewer district, or I mean, school districts, why their levy rates are so high or why they vary. Um, so I've made some special notes on several of them. Um, probably the you know, one that has the most um, moving parts to their levy rate change is um, the Lakeland School District 272. Um, they had no emergency levy this year and their bond levies decreased by 40%, which was like $970,000. So um, gives a little bit more reason for the difference in the levy rates. Do you have any questions? Well, yeah, it sounds really bad when you say non-compliant. 
Yes, it does. Is it really bad, or is it? Um, well, the, <laughs> good the, question. <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand that. Okay, um, being non-compliant to the LSO office is basically that they haven't kept up their entries into the registry regarding updating their budgets, um, you know, and also their audits, and the penalty for that is they do not receive the 3% bump up in their budget. Um, they do not receive annexation and new construction bump up. And um, they do get their sales tax revenues withheld by the state tax commission. Okay. <laughs> so it is bad. It is bad. Well, I'd just like so, to yeah. know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many people in, in the room know what non-compliant entails. Uh, I was not one of them and let alone people watching on, on YouTube, these are the kind of things that people want to know. What does it mean, non and it does have some teeth in it then. Yes, it some, does. Some dollar teeth in it. Okay, mm -hmm. good. That's all I have. So, Joanne, with the, uh, with the levy rate, and, and these, le these levy rates are based on 2020, or the increase from, right? Yes, from 2019 oh, to 2020. To 2020. Mm -hmm. that, that is the levy rate, and I think if Dina's in the room, she could probably confirm this, but that is the rate that we multiply new growth by when we come up to the value that we add to the following year. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. I learned something. Okay. Thanks, Joanne. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. So I asked you to approve um, the levy rate changes and also to approve the publication of the non-compliant districts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Motion. My turn. Your turn. I always get confused. I move that we approve the amended Kootenai County Taxing District levy rates uh, for 20, uh, tax year 20 and te tax year 21, FY 21, uh, as per the auditor and the publication dates as recommended by the auditor. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Okay, so moving on to item 15. Resolution 2020, <coughs> excuse me, dash 67, surplus equipment auditor. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Isaac Ohm for the auditor's office. So essentially what this is, the WRC has a, an old RICO copier from 2007. Uh, it's seen plenty of, plenty of use over the years. And essentially Captain Deet got a hold of the auditor's office trying to get this um, removal expedited just because there's not going to be any additional charge for H&H to come out while they're in the middle of this um, WRC renovation. So there, there's no, this isn't to um, approve any budget funds or anything like that to buy a new copier. It's just to remove the, the obsolete asset. Fair enough, motion. I move that we approve resolution 2020-67, which is the surplus of uh, equipment, a copier. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, motion carried. Item number 16, approval, Kootenai County's employment practice and procedures for adverse employment actions, effective October 1st, 2020, HR, our director, Sylvia Proud. Sylvia Proud, for the record. Um, as you're aware, ICRAMP um, did some modifications with our policy renewal effective October 1st, 2020, specifically related to employment practices, liability, They've added a deductible of $5,000. However, iCrimp is willing to waive the $5,000 deductible if we follow some risk management strategies that they've proposed. Who is iCrimp? Idaho. And, and, um, what, and what function do they perform? Idaho County Risk Management um, program. program. Thank you. And, and, and they're, they insure us they against insure lawsuits. They insure us. Liability, okay. um, director's offices, okay. those type Good. of coverages. Thank you. Um, so what has been proposed in a letter for the board, because there was discussion at the September 24th HR meeting, was, um, and, and ICRIMP had provided an example of a policy procedure that was being put, put into practice by another county. That included um, consulting with our civil attorney prior to taking any adverse employment action. And also then at that point, once the civil attorney is engaged with the department or the elected official um, wanting to take some adverse employment action, they would consult with ICRIMP's attorney 
and then from there we would move forward. Um, if a department head or an elected official chose not to follow this procedure, it, the board is saying the cost of that deductible would be at the expense of the elected official's budget or the department head's budget. So before you today is a procedure um, that had been reviewed by the commissioners for your approval and this would go into effect October 1st, a few days from now. Fair enough. Motion. I move that we approve the Kootenai County Employment Practices and Procedures uh, uh, slash adverse employment actions effective October 1st, 2020. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Moving on to our final action item. Determination of bid purchase of the Brown and, and uh, Just Building, uh, Board of County Commissioners, also known as Romer, also known as the Hamilton House. And so, uh, Zoanne, come up, please. Joanne Truman, uh, Historic Government Way Neighborhood Coalition, and the Music Conservatory of Coeur d'Alene. Thank you, Commissioners. We've been here before. Thank you for hanging in there with us. The Music Conservatory of Coeur d'Alene would like to make the following statements and request. We appreciate you opening up the Hamilton House for Bid last week and recognize your interest in having a music conservatory and, or other nonprofit occupy that important space in the minds of our Kootenai citizens. For the last three months, we've listened to various proposals to buy the building and work with us. Ty Scott led the way in bringing hope and reality to the purchase until the loan fell through last Tuesday due to, among other things, an our unproven track record since we haven't opened yet. The proposal by 627 Government Way LLC has been refreshing. This is essentially the message they have given us in a mutually agreed upon letter of intent to lease from them. Item one. We're going to charge you below market rates for as long as we can. Two, check in with us from time to time about your plans, but make the building yours and make all the renovations and improvements you desire to preserve it. Three, more power to you if you can make it a historic structure that can never be torn down for development. And four, if you want to buy it when you are financially able to, let's work out an option for you to do so. What does this mean? It virtually guarantees that the Hamilton House will be a music conservatory. In concert with our funding source, 627 Government Way, LLC, the Music Conservatory of Coeur d'Alene respectfully requests that you make a motion to sell the Hamilton House to them today for $500,001. Why? Item one, the cash is immediately available today. No loan is required. The county has a firm sale and is done with the building. No more to be done on the agenda or occupy your time. Closing could occur in several days or a few weeks as no loan is involved. Item two, when you put it out for bid last time, the Music Conservatory was the only bid. Everyone else already has already, has already had legal notice. Three, the value of a Music Conservatory to Kootenai County is invaluable. It lends an unmistakable aura to the community that is experienced by Sandpoint, Haley, Idaho, and other similar cities, smaller cities. In this era of divisive voices, we need more organizations that intend to co collaborate and bring out the best in us working together. Last item, we need to make some repairs immediately to the building before winter sets in. And I have added to the statement list, there is a proverb that says, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to help them. It's not to say that we deserve it, as stated, but I know a few citizen groups as ours who have worked so diligently in the face of huge odds to do all that you've asked of us. But I believe the citizens of this county do deserve some good news. They deserve a culturally rich addition to the community and a financially prosperous boon to the city economy. Please make a motion to sell the Hamilton House to 627 Government Way LLC today. We are ready to sign a lease with them and start preservation efforts efforts, and open up the music conservatory. Thank you. Any Thank questions you. for Zoanne? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a memo I, which I shared with, with uh, Commissioners Duncan and Brooks from Mayor Steve Widmeyer dated October 2nd, and it's very brief, and it's addressed to the Board of County Commissioners. Please accept this email. as our bid to purchase the county-owned property of 627 
Government Way, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, for $500,001 cash. We propose the closing date to be as soon as all paperwork can be prepared. We would propose that the closing occur at North Idaho Title. The purchase of the property will be 627 Government Way, LLC. That is a partnership owned 50 percent by Stephen Widmeyer and 50 percent by Donald Smock. Thank you, Steve. Wi Excuse me, Steve Widmeyer. Um, thoughts? Um, I'm kind of torn on this one only because I really feel like we should follow state law and procedure and uh, put it out for bid again because we have the bid that was received by 2 o'clock on Tuesday was not this offer right here. So that's, I'm just kind of a stickler for liking to stick with procedures and, and law. Um, I'm also willing to um, step back and, and take a breath for a minute and make sure that all the county's uh, future plans are in order. Um, that's all I got. I would like to hear from Pat. You knew I was going to say that, right? <laughs> well, we could bid it again, right? Yes, and that's the safest course of action. But we don't have to. Okay. All right. There is a, there is a subsection in Section 31808 which governs the sale of county property. And it does say, should the county be unable to sell at a public auction, any real or personal property belonging to the county, including property acquired by tax deed, which this is not, it may sell the property without further notice by public or private sale upon such terms and conditions as the, as the county deems necessary. So the first step, either way you want to go, is to reject the bid before you as non-responsive. Um, it, it did not follow the, um, the uh, parameters that were set in the notice and in reviewing case law, it would actually be illegal to accept that bid because it is non-responsive. Now you're um, talking about the bid that that, yeah, that, was, that was received that was one week ago today, right. okay. prior to the deadline. Right. I just want to make sure and we're the, on the same the, page. And the, at this current time, the bid by Mr. Widmeyer would be untimely. Um, that being that being said, you have two course. I think you have two courses of action. One, as Commissioner Duncan mentioned, I think is the legally safest course of action is to advertise it in the paper at least you know another date of sale and then advertise in the paper at least 10 days before that at which time you know mr. Woodmeyer and mr. Smock can um, submit either submit a, a bid you know substantially as they uh, you know in this substantially the same as the uh, offer they made uh, to Commissioner Filios um, or at least um, you know acknowledge that that bid is still on the table um, or if you find that because there was only one bid when we tried to sell it at a public at public auction and that bid was non-responsive I think an argument can at least be made that the, you could find that the county was unable to sell the property at public auction which would open the door to um, negotiation sale. for a sale uh, without the need to bid again that's a little more there's really not any case law that interprets this particular subsection however so it would be a little bit more risky um, proposition so I'm, I'm giving you those two options I think both of them are supported by law but one but the, the latter one is a little bit more legally risky in my opinion okay. you have any other thoughts I want to give them the keys today <laughs> Okay. Any further questions? No, I don't. Uh, what, uh, stay there for a moment. Um, I, I'm, I'm just going to do a very quick kaleidoscope here. I mean, we purchased this property three years ago. If we were going to use it for any other purpose than to make it available to the music conservatory, we would already have done that. Right. And, you know, it's interesting. We look back and we say, well, we purchased it for the land. Well, that's only partially true. Because when I negotiated that agreement, and that was the board of Bob Bingham, Mark Eberlein, and myself, we had considered relocating other groups into the, into the building. One of them in particular was adult misdemeanor probation because the group is not that large. But of course, after undergoing the uh, uh, 
property condition report and whatnot, we, we deemed that it was probably too risky, that the cost of renovation was too uh, pr cost prohibitive. So we kept it and deferred to the idea of turning it into a parking lot. Okay, fine. So since then, there were no offers to purchase. There was a, a party interested in relocating the building, but that was almost, it wasn't feasible. I mean, it was the, the structure was just too big. It couldn't be moved readily. So here we are three years later, and as I read, and I'm going to reread, Pat, the, uh, the Idaho Code Section 31-808, which says, should the county be unable to sell at a public auction any real or personal property belonging to the county, including property acquired by tax deed, it may sell the property without further notice by public or private sale upon such terms and conditions as the county deems necessary. Okay, so to your point, Pat, you're saying that this is a little bit riskier right. than proceeding with option one, which is to re-advertise and go out another 10 days. Right. As I look at it, and, and I was the one who negotiated the purchase and living with this for three years, I am ready to proceed. I'm ready to proceed with the second option, which is to make it available today to the bidders. I understand that it's riskier, but I think it's more than a calculated risk. Yeah. That's my the bidders, position. The bidders being Mr. Widmeyer, uh, Mr. Spock. Mr. Widmeyer, Mr. Spock, Spock thank what, you. What yes. happens if the risk of doing it today is realized? Who would sue us worse, for what? Um, well, that's, that's actually a good question because I'm not sure anybody would really, aside from the music conservatory group, would have standing to, to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, some activists could try to so was saying this was an illegal sale and and all that, but my first argument is they don't have standing to bring that as if they're you know just in, as just an individual taxpayer. But the worst case scenario would be if someone were able to sue and sue successfully, then the sale would be voided. But that's the absolute worst case scenario. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Pat. Thank you. Appreciate any, it. Any hey, other Chris. Any Chris, other? this is Sean. Yeah, go right ahead, Sean. Just for clarification, um, when we bought the property, you are correct that we had decided that it was not worth the money square foot wise to fix it up to move in one department. Right. The original plan was to take it down and put a building on it. Right. And that building was probably going to house the public defender, and that's how this whole thing got started. That's also when, true. When we said we were going to build on it, that that's when the pushback started. I've said it, and and I'll just say it one more time. I, I think it would be in the best interest of everyone, and I agree with Commissioner Duncan. We're in the process of picking an architect, and we really need to find out if we have enough land available for us to accommodate our needs first. That that That's my opinion on it. I don't vote. You guys vote. So I just wanted to get in my my opinion on that. Okay. So I respect your opinion. Uh, we've also had discussion, if we go back in time, to the facilities plan that was done a couple of boards ago, Dan Green, uh, Jay Nelson, and Todd Tondi. And those plans included consideration of what is uh, what is our annex to build in that location, which is a potentially larger footprint than going on campus. Why is that a problem? Well, the building where the annex was, first of all, that was going to be a parking garage. That was never going to be a building. It was going to be a parking garage that came up and connected with the parking lot that's existing now in front of the admin building. Since then, we have... Um, eliminated the swale in the front of the admin building, and now all stormwater runoff from the roof of the admin building and the parking lot goes into the swale behind the annex building. So now you would be dealing with the city in a matter of how much more runoff, if you put another building in there, is that swale big enough to take the extra water? So that would be one of the considerations. The other consideration is that that ground is going to have to have a lot more work. It's not flat. It's very much sloping east to west. Okay. And so we had had this, this discussion with a couple previous boards, and it was decided it was in our best interest to just leave 
that where it was. Okay, I just have one final question because we need to move on, but, but the plan that was contemplated at the time that that facility study was done, didn't that call for a six-story parking garage? That's what was going to be where the annex was, yes. But that, but that never got out of the gate. There was never any way no, in the city. So what I guess what I'm saying is if you want to go down that road and have that discussion about building there, I think the first place that we would have to go would be to the city and ask them what they would require because we're boxed in. And, Chris, you were, you were here when they – they told us that when we went in partners on them, the parking lot across the street, we did not have to take any of those old maple trees out in the park there. And I have a feeling that they're going to want that to happen in order to get enough water runoff. Okay, fair enough. Juliana, did you want to comment? Is it relevant to this topic? Yes. Yeah, please. Of course. Okay, this will be the last I mean, one. I am the shatter, but, um, and I just want for the record to say I'm not a proponent or a po an opponent of this, but I just wanted it to... I guess as a taxpayer clarity as to why we're in such a hurry to get rid of it when we're taking a $200,000 loss on it. That's my only question. We're not taking a $200,000 loss. How do you loss. figure that? Well, didn't we pay $700,000? No, we paid four hundred and twenty. dollars You got bad uh, information. Okay, bad information. Okay. Nix that from the record then, but I do have something to say after this. <laughs> Public okay, any further discussion? Uh, no, but I just, in, to one of the, that point is um, you had come back that it's worth almost 800000 for um, best use. Well, high, well, yeah, okay. Highest and best use. That's an estimate. Mm -hmm. Which it is. That's true. Yep. But even, even knowing that, we still decided as a board to offer it at a minimum bid of 500000 sure. For me to renege on that now and say, well, but, you know, it's really worth eight, I can't do that. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying in clarification for oh. Julina. Yeah. The land alone is potentially worth as much as 800000 So for those people who think we don't care, if this goes through today, you're walking in or somebody is with a fair amount of equity. I'd like the record to reflect that. But in any case, we did agree that we'd offer it for a minimum bid of 500000 Anything further? Excuse me, Pat, do you want, yes, ma'am. not the amount of money. It, it, it's the conditions. The, the no, no, was yeah. non-responsive because it proposed that the $400,000 that was not cash would be carried by the county. And that was not one of the, not, that was not allowed by the uh, terms and conditions in the notice. Or state statute. Well, state statute would have allowed it had you wanted, had you yeah, it, pr it, presented that as an option. Okay. But okay. because it was not because it was not the fact that it okay. was included made the bid non-responsive. Okay. Okay. So that's the answer. Not, it didn't not meet the amount it, of money. It did not meet the terms of the bid as we had as as we wanted it. That's the simple answer to your question because it was asking us to basically lend money in the process, and that's not what we were supposed to do. That wasn't the way the the uh, bid request was defined. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we understand that. We do. Yeah. Ma'am, well, uh, your name and address, please. You okay with that? Okay. La last one. Come on up. We got to get this one. We got to, but you have to come up to the mic. Um, I just want to express my gratitude for all the work that you've gone to. It has been quite a surreal experience for all of us. Um, and last week was such a um, crazy thing. I just can't say it more succinctly. But when we left, we thought it was all over, except that we were told that if our bid was still viable, then legal would let us know before 2 p.m. the next day. At 11, about 11.30 or whatever, I got a call from Nancy Jones, and um, there was somebody who called in with a full price bid. And so I thought, well, what does this mean? And then we got another call for, you know, another full price bid. So it, it, these are strong messages to us that the bid was still viable, <coughs> although we never heard from legal 
ever until today. <laughs> so I thought we were going to hear in 24 hours. Anyway, but I just wanted to say thank you. I know it's been crazy. We're not doing this just because we want a music school. We're doing this because studies have shown it's proven that the integration of arts and culture in a community raises the economy like 7 to 25 percent. And we want to see the progress of the community. And we know how wonderful a music conservatory will be. Um, and currently there's a arts, uh, it's called an Art Vibrant Communities Research that shows that Haley, Idaho is sitting as the first small city in the state of Idaho um, in one of the top 10 cities of the nation. Because they bought a historical home 15 years ago and they have an arts and culture center right there, and that's Sun Valley. But um, now Bonners County sits ahead of us, but when we get this conservatory, we'll be sitting okay. way high. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. I just you. wanted to say that. You're very welcome. Okay, that's it. No more public comment on this topic. Um, any further comment by Leslie, Bill? Anybody care to make a motion? I'd make a motion that we sell this thing today to the. Uh, what? Yeah, that's not what's on me. Oh, we already did, did that. As well. Okay, go right ahead. Yeah. What, what's agenda today is determination of the bid. So I don't think a separate sale outside of the bid process is agenda for today. I think you need to do that in a separate meeting. After okay, that. all right. So the only thing you're determining today is the bid is accepting or rejecting. Well, I move we reject the bid that was made as Second. I'm responsible. Second. Aye. 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 And again, for the record, this uh, this pertains to the bid that was made one week ago today. But what about the bid that was received between then and now? It's not really a bid. It's an offer. Sale. Can't be this meeting. Yeah. Business meeting next week, I think. Is what you mean. Business meeting yes. next week, yes. Or another meeting this week is properly noticed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Quit. Go home. Okay. So, so determination of bid wasn't sufficient to proceed today. No. Okay. Okay, fine. So, so we'll either set up another meeting this week or take it up next week. Okay, then. Public comment? Joanne. I just have one question. <laughs> I, I promise. I'm, I'm not long-winded today. Um, I just wanted to comment on the um, back way, way five hours ago when Judge Peterson and Mark Hyde got up here and spoke about the OVW grant. And the reason I'm speaking on the record is I just want Nancy to be aware of this. If she's going to put it on the website, like you had said, we have concurrently had OVW grants through the state through our um, adult misdemeanor probation program. So it's not totally new to the county, just this particular one. So I just wanted you to be aware of that so that we're not making ourselves look dumb. Good point. And where I was coming from was to indicate that we're one of only four counties uh, in the nation to receive that. Yeah. Putting a plug in for the county. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then. So the time is now 2.57. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.